I will start right directly with the motivation. Um, nowadays, we can hardly imagine our lives without electric devices. We use them almost everywhere in our um, everyday lives. And the thing that most of these electric devices have in common is an electric motor, which transforms electric energy into the mechanical one. Now, um, in order to, to build an optimal design of the motor before constructing an expensive physical prototype, engineers perform um, computer-aided simulations. And often time domain simulations are required, for example, for induction motors. Uh, you see here a time domain simulation example, and you might notice the high frequency oscillations, um, which can come, for example, from um, the pulse excitations. And this would, of course, require a very fine resolution in the time domain. Besides, um, within, especially within the initial design stages, one would be interested um, in the steady state characteristics of the motor. And in this case, one would need possibly to calculate over a long time interval using a very small time step, which would lead um, to a very time consuming computation. Uh, for this reason, acceleration using the efficient parallel time methods would, would be very useful. About modeling, the problem that we are actually uh, dealing with is called the eddy current problem with respect to the unknown magnetic vector potential A, which basically describes the magnetic field in the motor. Um, it is a partial differential equation. We have first order in time and second order in space. This is the curl-curl operator. The input is given by the current density Js. This equation is usually nonlinear. The nonlinearity comes from the relativity function mu. And uh, sigma is the conductivity. And I would like to uh, point out that it might be equal to zero in some part of the domain, for example, here in the air gap, um, because we would have non-conducting uh, regions in the domain. So having the prescribed boundary in initial conditions, uh, one would typically discretize this equation in space, for example, with the finite element method, and obtain an initial value problem with a given initial condition. And um, this might be a system of ordinary differential equation, or in our case, this will be rather a system of differential algebraic equations due to the presence of this non-conducting regions because in this case, this derivative will be just um, absent. It will not be there. Uh, so this could be solved, as I mentioned, classically. It is still solved sequentially um, in industry. Um, but also, it can be solved, for example, using the prior real method. Probably most of you know it very well. I will still briefly recall it to introduce the notations. So the idea of the parallel is to split the considered time interval into windows, solve um, the initial value problem on each window separately, and uh, eventually get a continuous function uh, eliminating the jumps at the synchronization point. We have two propagators, the course and define in the course, F and G. Um, the fine is run in parallel and the course is executed sequentially. And then the real update formula looks like this. The initial value is all is fixed because in this case we solve an initial value problem. And then the solution at the synchronization points is updated um, using this formula. So this was the first part of the talk uh, with the motivation problem setting and brief recalling of real. Now I'd like to go to the second part. Um, where we consider the methods which solve, um, which calculate the periodic steady state solution directly, where the period is given. This, the, the ideas included here, I already presented last year in this workshop, but we extended the numerical results that we have, and also I will use this section as a base um, to the next one. So 
Um, if one is interested in the periodic steady state solution, which I highlighted here, instead of the initial value problem, one would solve the time periodic problem. So if we consider solving this within the parallel time framework, we we'll not only have to get rid of the jumps at the synchronization points, but also to satisfy the periodicity condition. And the natural extension of the paraview uh, to solve the time periodic problem was done in the paper of Martin Ganda some time ago. Um, and as you might have already noticed, the only difference to paraview is the, the update of the initial value. With the power real it was always fixed and here we have some kind of relaxation where we take the final value from the previous iteration. Uh, now what can we do something ha to have a more direct periodicity? This was and there was another method also in the same paper proposed by Martin um, and it's called, it was called PPPC, which stands for periodic parallel with periodic course problem. And um, in fact, you see here the, the initial condition is directly coupled with the final um, value at the end of the of your interval through the course propagator. If I write it in the operator form. It looks like this. It has this time periodic structure. And um, the, this coupling is now explicitly visible between the um, U0 and UN minus one for the course solver. So the, the advantage here is that this system ensures the strong periodicity on the course level, but um, the disadvantage is that it might have a quite a big size and the system has to be solved um, for all the variables at once. And from the first side, it seems to be an unconvenient structure because of this top um, rightmost element. Um, furthermore, if we have a nonlinear problem, this course operator G is nonlinear. So the whole system on the course level is nonlinear, and we have to linearize it somehow. The, uh, in the same paper, uh, was present, there was presented a Jacobi-based fixed point iteration, um, where basically, if I come back to the previous slide, um, we just kept these identities on the left-hand side and put the rest to the right hand side and prescribed um, the previous iteration to these core solutions. So this, um, on one hand, it's, it's a, a very simple idea and it's very good because it's fully non-intrusive. Your F and G can still be the black box solvers, but um, you might see that it, this, linearization approach will not be exact for linear solvers. Um, while you would expect that um, your iterative method would converge after one iteration already when you, when you deal with linear systems. Therefore, um, our goal is to construct a numerical method which would take advantage of this uh, block cyclic structure and um, have a faster convergence. Therefore, uh, we introduce another course operator, G bar, which solves instead of the original possibly nonlinear problem, it solves the linear one, um, which I have written here. And then I wrote this PPPC periodic system using this G bar linear operator, and the rest I just put to the right hand side. So this, uh, you will call it additive splitting. And um, if you build an analogy with the fixed point iteration of Ganda, um, there you could, um, when you set G bar to be zero, you get uh, that fixed point iteration proposed in the paper. And so now this is a linear system 
and we could write it in an explicit matrix vector form like this and um, this has again now explicitly we can see this block cyclic structure and this is already well known and we already saw in the talk of uh, Xu Lin Wu yesterday that the systems can be transformed from the time domain into the frequency domain by applying the Fourier transform. So then instead of the block cyclic structure you will get a block diagonal structure and then you will obtain also parallelization on the course level. Um, so this method, um, as I said, is, is pretty simple and it's basically a change of variable from the linear algebra perspective. Um, this approach was um, applied to the eddy current problem directly by Biro. But it was not, of course, done back then uh, within the parallel in time framework. Instead, it was just um, done on one level. So you take your differential equation, you discretize it, let's say, with implicit Euler using fine time step because you just have one level. And then you construct uh, this periodic log cyclic um, system. And you could apply this multi-harmonic transformation using the Fourier transform and parallelize um, the, the calculation of, of the solution. And compared to the to application of this approach within the parallel in time framework, where we had only uh, parallelization where we had only the system on the course level. Here, the system size is way bigger because we have a smaller time step. And provided that you have many processors, that you have, um, no, sorry, here there should be an F to show that this size is, is bigger. Um, then this can be actually the, the best case scenario um, for the linear case. So now we, the considered approaches that I just mentioned, all of them, we apply to an um, eddy current problem for a crack cell cable model. This is basically a um, wire inside of a steel tube. It is a nonlinear model. The nonlinearity is given by the magnetization curve, which shows um, the dependence of the magnetic flux density on the magnetic field intensity. This model is rather small. It has a bit more than 2000 degrees of freedom. And we considered um, two cases. This nonlinear model with uh, the nonlinearity that I just talked about and also a, a linear um, example where the relativity was a linear function. Uh, so now what we see here, we have the strong scaling. So on the x-axis, we have the different number of processors that we used. And on the y-axis, um, we have an effective number of linear solutions. What we mean by this, let's say um, when I split my job among NCPUs, I only calculate um, I only take into account the CPU which solves the maximum number of linear systems. That's what I mean by the effective number. So with the blue dotted line, I show the number of the systems solved with the classical sequential time stepping. Now we see that PBIC was already somewhat better. It needed less uh, system solutions. For example, here it was about three times um, it needed about three times less system solves. And here for n equals 50, in both cases, it was about already one order of magnitude better. Now, this Jacobi type fixed point iteration of Gunda performed better in all the cases, almost all the cases, than PPIC. But um, we noticed that the, the cost was barely changing uh, when, when we change the number of CPUs. 
Now the approach of Biro, which applied um, this frequency domain transformation on uh, just one level, it performed the best in the linear case, which is which which is expected because it doesn't include any iteration. It is it is a direct solver in the linear case, and it has uh, linear scaling. Um, when here, when the number of CPUs uh, is multiplied by 10, we also have 10 times less uh, system solves. And then uh, the considered um, fixed point iteration and this multi harmonic correction applied to the within the parallel in time framework on the course level, it performed worse in the linear case, but in the nonlinear case, it was worse for n equals to five, but better to the other, in the other cases. So we see here that the best performance was um, was done using the last two approaches. So now we consider them a bit in more detail. Um, so here I show again the effective number of linear solutions, as I showed in the previous slide. Now, if I consider 100%, the number of system solved uh, within the sequential time stepping using these two approaches uh, already with five CPUs we only needed to solve five or six percent of the linear systems compared to the sequential time stepping and when n was equal to 50 it was uh, less or equal to half a percent and now about the actual execution time the sequential time stepping until the steady state required calculation over 31 periods, which lasted about 68 hours or almost three days. While these two approaches needed for n equal to 50, three and a half hours, and here a bit less than four and a half hours, and for n equals to 50, um, the multi harmonic correction applied to the course. Um, system within the parallel time framework needed um, about 15 minutes and the Vero's approach less than 25 minutes. So this is quite um, quite good speed up that we obtain. Now we consider a bit more complicated example. This is a three-dimensional transformer model. Um, you have a steel core there and two uh, coils excited with the sinusoidal 50 hertz um, signal. Um, this model is, is way bigger than, than the last one of the, cable, of the KXL cable, but still visually you could see that uh, the discretization is in space is quite coarse. Um, now, when I talk about the number of linear system solutions, I'm not, uh, here I consider not only the effective, number as in the previous uh, example but also the total number um, it means that um, i take all the system solves of all my computer um, processors and i just sum them up so this means that i don't consider any parallelization here um, and we only need um, 14 or 10 percent of the sequential costs even when we don't do any parallelization. So this is only the improvement due to the methods themselves. And uh, for the effective linear solves, um, the need as before also less than 1%. About wall clock time, the sequential time stepping uh, was performed over 21 periods till the steady state was reached, which lasted about 19 days. While the Biro's method needed nine hours, um, having the speed up of 51 times and uh, the parallel the parallel based methods with correction on the course grid required less than three hours given the speed up of 176 so i would say the, the speed up is quite impressive in these cases um, now before i talked um, about the solution of the time periodic problems when the period was given. Um, now it might happen that we don't know the period 
For example, when you have in autonomous systems, we don't have any excitation, uh, which could tell us which uh, period will be uh, possessed by the by the solution. For example, here I show um, four node voltages of a circuit, which I will use in a numerical example later. And you see the, the classical transient behavior and then the steady state is reached, but we cannot define the period from the beginning. So in this case, um, we would like to solve the time periodic problem and include the period T as an additional variable. So if we want to consider this again in the parallel in time framework, we would have to get rid of the jumps the periodicity jump and also to somehow define um, the length of, of our interval to define the period that we consider. And this could be done, uh, this was actually already done by Teufelhardt um, many years ago. It was considered within the multiple shooting framework. And the first step uh, is rescaling of your original time interval to the unit one, so that you won't need to, to change your partition every time you update your T. Um, then your system will look like this, and you, you partition your now unit interval, and um, we introduce here the solution operator F, and when you compare it to the previous setting, we have now additional parameter here, because it depends on the unknown period T. And the multiple shooting method would search for the root of, um, of a function phi, um, which is given by the mismatch conditions. This is the periodicity condition, and this are the jumps condition as before. So then you apply uh, the Newton method, and um, you would have to calculate within the standard multiple shooting approach the Jacobian, um, and which is given by this block matrix. These capital G's are uh, the derivatives of your solution with respect to the initial values, and the small g's are the derivatives with respect to the unknown period. And now we could apply um, to this Newton method in order not to calculate the Jacobian exactly, we could apply as within the prior real um, the approximation of the derivative using the cross propagator G. So we approximate the derivative using some kind of finite difference approximation as it is done within the prior real. And um, we would be in the setting now, which is similar to the PPPC that we had before when the period was given, just now we have an additional column here and an additional variable. Um, so if you have a linear system, you could use again this linearization that we proposed using the course solver G, G bar, which solves the linear system. Um, and then you would have a um, system like this, which you could see is an undetermined system because we included additional column and additional variable, but the number of equations did not change. So the way to solve it would be using the Moore-Penrose pseudo-inverse, for example. And um, also these values of, of Gs, um, which are the derivatives with respect to T, um, you could calculate them approximately uh, because your equation in T is actually linear, so you could calculate this from, from your equation, these derivatives. So now um, examples. Um, this is the, the circuit is called Copet's um, oscillator. Uh, it has some capacitances, resistances, inductance, constant uh, voltage, source, and the transistor model is given by a nonlinear function H given here. Uh, and now we apply this um, 
the method that I just showed with a known period to it. And knowing the period, um, so this, the, the, la the last method is, its conversion is shown here in, the, in green. And now knowing the period that we calculated, we can also, um, just for comparison, we also applied the PD PCA approach with this multi harmonic correction, and we see that it required four iterations less, which is expected because you have one variable less um, to, to define. And even though the, the size of the system is quite is very small, it has only four uh, variables. If you talk about computational acting, the sequential time stepping to get the steady state um, required calculation over 10 periods, while with PPPC and PPPC with unknown period, um, we needed four and three times less linear systems sold respectively. Although in this case with unknown periods, you basically your, your solver is different because you have to do the pseudo inversion so you cannot actually compare it like this exactly. Um, so this was pretty much it. I go to my conclusions. So um, we have seen that the steady state analysis can be sufficiently accelerated using the parallel in time method. We proposed a linearization algorithm which um, allows parallelization also on the co course level. And finally, we included the period T as an unknown into the uh, periodic parallel and time framework. What we would like to focus on in the future, we know that Pareo performs badly for hyperbolic system. Now we have some examples from electrical engineering, which is represented by a coupling of hyperbolic and parabolic problems. And we would like to see how Pareo deals with that. And also we would like to investigate the real for high index differential algebraic equation. Here are some recent references. And I thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>